you hear the voice? Right. Well, hi everybody, it's Tony Harrington here from Your Property Investing and welcome to the live webinar. We've got Terry Ryder from Hotspotting with us uh, on this broadcast. Uh, Terry, welcome aboard, great to have you again. Uh, this is about our third or fourth that we put together now, so we're getting some great feedback. Tonight we'll be focusing on uh, the Brisbane market. Um, there's a lot happening in the spaces around Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide and Perth, but Brisbane's where we really wanted to hone in because this is where we think there's still really good affordable property. There's really good investment opportunities up there. Um, we're gonna to talk tonight, we'll be talking about things like rental yields, things like vacancy rates, things like capital growth, uh, population and migration. And Terry's put together a couple of free reports for us. So if you're attending um, with us live, you're gonna get a copy of that free report will be emailed out to you. Uh, Terry's gonna to touch on some of that tonight. And I've also got five exclusive packages that we're gonna to put together up there in one of those specific areas that we're talking about tonight where we think there's still good, good uh, prospects for capital growth and uh, great rental returns. So for anybody that's interested, if you wanna just put your, put your cursor down on the bottom of your page and you'll see a little chat button come up, if you're not familiar with Zoom and how Zoom works. And in the chat button, if you push on that now, you'll see that I've already put um, access there to off-market exclusive opportunities. So if you're interested as the night goes on, uh, pop a question into the chat box for us. We'll, um, we'll answer any questions as we go along. And I'll drop that link in there a couple of times throughout the night. And if you want to book a call with me direct and have a talk about any of these opportunities or your situation, that's what we're free to do. There's nothing for sale tonight. Um, so what I might do instead of babbling on, I might get Terry on board and say, how's things? Terry, a bit warmer up in Brizzy than it is here in Melbourne? Not necessarily. No. Uh, um, we're going for a bit of a cold snap. Um, Queensland's been having sort of temperatures that Queensland thinks it never has. Uh, in winter and um, today and tonight is one of those uh, times it's um, I know it's supposed to be really cold in Melbourne but it's also a little bit chilly here um, we've been having all sorts of weird weather this year um, yeah, sign sure of the time. <laughs> um, yeah. maybe it's maybe it's a metaphor for what's going on in in the wider world the economy and property markets to a certain degree um, but one of the things we want to do tonight is um, give people some real information. Um, I don't know what you think. I do know what you think, actually. But I'm sure you agree <laughs> with me that, that me, media is just being really silly the way it's um, reporting real estate at the moment. Um, I think everybody knows that there's been um, a change in climate, but it's, it's not nearly the way it's been portrayed in many media headlines. Um, I just think that... Um, media seems to think their job is to scare the living daylights out of people and they're trying to outdo each other every day with more and more strident sensationalist headlines and it's kind of our role to um to give people some real information so they can <clears throat> make decisions based on you know good research based data rather than um sound bites Absolutely, mate. And I think the last couple of webinars that you and I have run together, the feedback I've got from people is they loved the data and the facts that we're actually presenting and, and how we pretty much, <clears throat> in most cases, just blow what the media is saying completely out of the water. So folks, strap yourselves in tonight. We'll give you the real picture on Brisbane. We'll give you the real picture on what we see that's really happening out there in the market. Terry's been 45 years now as um, Australia's leading property market data analyst and expert. So Terry, how about you take control for the night? Let's get stuck into it. Give the people some good value and uh, let's get some information out to people so you have you can have a bit more clarity around where the markets are going and what you can potentially do. So Terry, I'll hand it over to you. Okay, thanks Tony. Um, <clears throat> and thanks for aging me with that, that reference to 45 years. I, I started when I was six, I was six years old, of course. Uh, but, um, so I'll share my screen and we're just gonna firstly have a look at, I'll get rid of you because we don't want you. Um, um, let me just put that into slideshow, play from start and... Um, Good to go, beautiful. Yep, it's, it's just a little bit... Um, hmm. Anyway, um, I'll just go with what I've got there. Um, I was hoping to be a little bit less um, <clears throat> full screen, but um, we can deal with that in a moment. Um, 
want to start with just some, some raw data about what's happening with, with prices and with vacancy rates and rentals um, to give people a bit of a picture. Uh, and, and in particular, highlight the differences that are happening in markets around Australia. We've had a couple of years when it felt like everywhere was showing phenomenal growth. To a certain degree, that was true. Most parts of Australia have had um, some exceptional growth for about two years. Uh, now we're in a market where there's more segmentation. We've still got plenty of growth markets in the country, um, but we also have markets where um, prices are no longer growing, um, depending on whose data you believe. And um, somewhere there's evidence perhaps um, that um, prices are starting to contract a little. It's not as dramatic as media would have us believe, and I don't think it's going to be nearly as dramatic as some of the forecasts, but um, we are in a, a different sort of a market. And um, so I just want to firstly um, position Brisbane in the, the overall national market. <clears throat> Brisbane has, had, has been leading Australia on price growth for the past two years depending on which figures you believe, it's had um, medium price growth for houses um, in 2021 uh, of 25 to 30%, um, different numbers from different sources, but it's been exceptional growth and it's been leading the nation. Adelaide's also done very well. Um, but despite the level of growth that Brisbane has, it's still a very affordable city compared to the two biggest cities and the capital cities. You can see from the figures on the screen, both Sydney and Melbourne have median house prices above a million. Brisbane head, heading north um, and, um, and Melbourne is also very close to a million dollars, but Brisbane has a relative affordability compared to those cities. And that's also true in the unit markets where Brisbane's median unit price is around half a million, whereas in Sydney it's 820. Um, it's interesting that a city like Hobart actually has a higher median apartment price than Brisbane does. So there's, there's uh, a good level of affordability in apartments as well. Um, now, it's interesting to look at the growth numbers because most of the headlines are telling us that prices are falling across the country, um, mm -hmm. which of course they're obviously not. Um, but probably most people are, are aware of the headlines. Some people will be believing them because um, <clears throat> they're, they're not doing any real research. But what the numbers actually show is that um, mm -hmm. in annual terms, Brisbane is still up. This, these are core logic numbers. Um, Brisbane's up in annual terms 27% uh, compared to the same time last year, whereas Sydney and Melbourne are in single digits. Canberra's still um, chugging along okay at 16%, but Brisbane's still very much the national leader and the only capital city that's within Kui of Brisbane's annual growth is Adelaide. Mm. Now, just in just in your experience there, Terry, when we see we've we've had really good rising markets for the last few years, and obviously there is a little bit of a, a shift in play here. In your experience, just across the board in say the major capital cities, do you find it's the top end of the market that maybe levels off a little bit first before your more um, affordable sectors like your house and land sectors? Absolutely. I think that's one of the, the key trends that we've seen across uh, Australia. Now, media tends to generalise. They, they Quite often, they take what's happening in Sydney and Melbourne and extrapolate it to the whole country. Sydney and Melbourne are doing something, then the media will tell us that's a national situation. Um, but they also generalise about a single city. Um, mm -hmm. Sydney prices um, have dropped 3%, according to core logic figures in the last quarter. But um, what we've seen in in Sydney, in Melbourne, in Brisbane and elsewhere is that the top end is the, the part of the market that's come off. Mm -hmm. And of course, when the top end drops, it drags down your median price. And it, it tends to give you figures like we're seeing on the screen there for Sydney and Melbourne, where according to core logic figures in the last quarter, they've dropped um, two or 3%. Um, but if you examine uh, different segments of the Sydney market and the Melbourne market, you find that pricing is help, holding up quite strongly in the cheaper markets and the sales activity in particular. I mean, our latest analysis of sales data shows that um, in Melbourne, um, you know, the, the two racks and the, um, you know, the, the Armadales, the, um, the, those top end suburbs with median prices of two or $3 million dollars, those markets have come up quite, quite a lot, but the more affordable areas, uh, the outer ring areas um, are still producing very strong sales numbers and prices are holding up. 
pretty well. It's really, really important that the listeners uh, take that on board because they can get sucked into this media vortex that blows this out of proportion. And I know for a fact, especially the Melbourne and the Brisbane markets, that the outer rings and the uh, corridors that we're working in, we know that there's still sales volumes going and we know there's still mm. massive demand out there. So great point, mate. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, no, it really stands out both um, in the analysis of sales data, which we think is really important because it's a precursor of what might happen with prices. Um, we, we could actually see uh, a downturn in Sydney coming, particularly at the top end um, in the second half of last year because the sales numbers were starting to fall off. Media keeps telling us all because interest rates are risen, but the Sydney market was tapering off, particularly mm. in the, the more expensive areas, long before interest rates rose. Um, and uh, to a certain extent, that was happening in Melbourne as well. Um, but um, the sales numbers in Brisbane in, say, the March quarter were down a little bit, but very strong um, compared to other parts of Australia, and particularly strong when you realise that um, Brisbane had a major weather event in the middle of that quarter, and yet mm -hmm. um, its sales activity um, hardly skipped a beat. And mm -hmm. at the time of the... The big, the big water in uh, late February, uh, media was telling us Brisbane prices were going to collapse because of the flood, and it didn't happen. And as you can see from the figure on the screen, the last quarter of Brisbane has still produced a pretty healthy level of growth in its <clears throat> median house price, in contrast to the figures that CoreLogic has published for uh, Sydney and Melbourne. Mm. I heard the sale of rubber, diggy, rubber dinghies went through the roof up there during the, during the wet period. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, gum yeah, boots. <laughs> gum boots as well. Yeah, but, uh, but you know, media always react, overreacts to everything. Um, according, according to one high profile economist who's in the media every day nationally, Australian property prices should have fallen 15% by now because of the war in Ukraine. I mean, sometimes they're drawing a very long bow to try and paint a catastrophe from um, the consequences of an event. But, you know, what we've seen around Australia, Australia is, let's face it, the, the land of the natural disaster. And if you decided that you were going to <clears throat> eradicate from your list of possibilities everywhere that's had a, a cyclone or flood or drought or bushfire, there'd be nowhere left to buy. Um, and what we've seen time after time is the incredible resilience of Australian markets to natural mm. disasters because they're, they're frequent occurrences of strains. No doubt there's, a, there's a, uh, a major level of suffering and sometimes there's loss of life and people's homes are inundated sometimes. Um, but the markets are incredibly resilient to these events and they, um, they carry on. And Brisbane's done that um, most impressively um, in the first half of this year. Mm. So... Mm -hmm. uh, so in the most recent quarter, um, Brisbane has still produced um, pretty healthy growth. Canberra's still growing a bit. Sydney and Melbourne are down according to the core logic numbers. Um, looking at units, Brisbane's up 16% in annual terms, well above um, Sydney and Melbourne. Canberra's also done pretty well as a matter of interest in the unit markets. Um, but again, in the last quarter, Brisbane um, median unit price is up 3.5% in contrast to the the small declines we've seen in uh, Sydney and Melbourne. So mm. Brisbane showing um, its strength, its resilience. Um, none of that surprises me. Brisbane time has certainly come, and I think it's Brisbane is actually at the beginning of a an extensive growth cycle, uh, mm. which has been caused by a number of things. Relative affordability is one thing. Um, the population trends very much favour Brisbane and South East Queensland. It's mm -hmm. by far the biggest uh, growth area from internal migration. That's people moving from one part of Australia to another. Um, but it's also the infrastructure spend. We think that's incredibly influential. And, and previously, um, when um, Sydney and Melbourne had had their boom from 2013 to 17, and Brisbane didn't have that growth. The difference that I saw was that Sydney and Melbourne were spending big time on um, um, transport infrastructure and other types of infrastructure. And Brisbane really uh, was going through a period where very little was being spent, but that's very different now. And I'll show you a list of projects in a moment, shows mm. you just how much is happening in Brisbane. But the big thing is it has to become even more elevated in terms of infrastructure projects, big ones, because Brisbane's going to be hosting the 2032 Olympics, Brisbane mm. and other parts of Queensland. 
and that necessitates that starting right now, they've got to start upgrading transport infrastructure, hospitality investment, uh, sporting infrastructure, obviously, because, uh, and um, that they need to get cracking. And um, so Brisbane's got a kind of a 10 year growth horizon um, boosted mm. by that, um, that Olympic Games, which is very significant, as, as we've seen from other cities, both in Australia and around the world that have hosted um, events like the Olympics. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a lot of tradie clients um, who, who I work with in regard to the property investment space. And it's it's quite odd that a lot of them are now leaving Victoria and heading to Brizzy because they know that there's plenty of work, there's plenty of infrastructure, there's plenty of construction and the money up there is pretty good and the lifestyle is a bit better than down here. So, um, yeah, certainly I can see the trends. Yeah, well, <clears throat> we actually talked about um, the 20, uh, previous uh, broadcast we did together. We talked about um, the 2026 Commonwealth Games, the impact that was going to have on regional Victoria. Yeah. We saw um, on the Gold Coast, they hosted the Commonwealth Games in 2018. And in the years leading up to that, there was a, a real estate boom. It wasn't after the event, it was before the event mm. because it was the big construction um, phase for the sports facilities. Um, the casino was upgraded. The big shopping centres were expanding and upgrading in anticipation of the tourism influx and so that created an enormous number of jobs so people were coming and living and working on the gold coast and that boosted the rental market and the sale market and there was a you know a property boom in the years leading up to that event so brisbane has that in prospect as well and it's, it's already started its growth path but the the announcement of the olympics is just just giving it a longer horizon to aim at now it, it might have perhaps had a shorter cycle uh, than would otherwise be the case but now that that olympics has, has been secured um it's it's got a, a much more long-term growth horizon um to aim at i think mm -hmm. okay so th these are the numbers that i think are most important of all right now because um <clears throat> you know the, we, we may well be coming into a period where uh, markets are less vibrant in some parts of australia anyway and um the prices um won't, won't be as um, as keen as as before, but and we've also got rising interest rates. But this is the big compensating factor. This is what um, investors, I think, really should be taking note of. Right across Australia, we've got incredibly low vacancy rates. I've never seen a situation. You did mention I've been doing this for forty five years, and I have never seen vacancy rates so low in so many places. It's a genuine crisis um, and a shortage that cannot be fixed anytime soon, mm. particularly because there's not a single politician in the land that suggested a, a <laughs> policy that can deal with it. There's not a government out there talking about it, Terry. <laughs> We're well, absolutely right. We just had a federal election. Did you hear a single word <laughs> about the rental shortage crisis and, and the federal election campaign? They're not even aware it exists, I don't think. Not, a, not even on the radar, mate. So um, the reality is, <clears throat> and, and this is shown by the the new census data that's now being released, of all the rental properties that are in around Australia, only 8% are provided by government housing. 92% are provided by the private sector. That's ordinary mum and dad investors. Mm. And there've been a series of decisions over the years, say the last five years, which have dissuaded some people from uh, property investment and the, the pool of rental properties diminished to the point where we now have Brisbane 0.6%, um, most of the other capital cities are also below 1%. Most of the regional markets are well below 1%. And now we're starting to see rental growth figures that I haven't seen before. And Brisbane rents, according to ESCOM research, have risen 21% in the last 12 months for houses and 15% for units. So this is pretty good news for property investors. It's a great, not a great time to be a tenant, but a very good time to be a landlord. And um, with interest rates, rising although i would also say about that that if you're in a new borrower going to borrow today for an investment property you're not going to be paying the headline interest rates the the, the lenders are competing very strongly for new business you've got an existing mortgage your interest rates gone up but if you you're a new mortgage then you're probably going to be getting a very competitive interest rate much lower than the the headline rates that's being advertised so absolutely um, absolutely. um spoke with lisa my finance broker this morning because a lot of new new clients are coming through wanting um you know investment loans etc and 
um, the smaller banks and the smaller lenders are really starting to outgun the big four. So don't be don't be a sucker to the big four banks out there no. because um, get your broker onto it because there are better deals out there. Yeah. What the data shows, Tony, is that there's a lot of people refinancing. And the reason they're refinancing is that the, the lenders are offering the, the low discount interest rates to new customers, not existing customers. So if you want to get the best rates, you've got to refinance. And it's not that hard to do. Yep. So people are, and most of the refining businesses is going to the second tier lenders, not the big four. So be mm. mindful of that. There's some really good second tier lenders out there, um, mm. like Macquarie and, and others, uh, where you can get a, a much better deal than you would get from the big four banks. And so, you know, don't don't sort of believe the um, the media headlines about morbid stress and um, <laughs> reduced yeah. borrowing capacity. You can still get very good deals out there as, as borrowers. Right. And um at a time when um, rents are growing very strongly in most parts of Australia and will continue to because there's no solution in sight to the shortage. No, and that, right. means, that means rental yields are growing. Yeah, I think we spoke uh, last time we were on, Terry, you put one of your properties up by about 100 bucks a week. I'll put one of mine up by about $90 a week. I mean, you know, the market's there. Capitalise on it while we can. Yeah, and, um, and one of the things that's happening quite commonly, um, just based on what people are anecdotally telling me who are at the coalface of the industry is that when there's a rental, a rare rental property becomes available, you hold an open house and it's common to get 20, 25, 30 parties queuing at the, the open house mm. and the asking rent might be 450 a week and someone will offer 470 a week to beat the competition and mm. offer to pay six months in advance. You know, people are offering more than the asking mm. and offering special, I'll pay 12 months in advance if I can get this rental property because there's, there's such a scarcity that people are um, uh, sort of having a, an informal auction. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, yeah. that's the main mechanism by which I think rents, rents are rising at the moment. Not, not so much um, bloody minded landlords um, extracting um, blood out of their tenants it's more that the, um, the potential tenants are um, outbidding one another goes back to the old supply and demand yeah and unfortunately there's a there's a huge imbalance um, which the only way they can correct it is actually providing incentives to people to become property investors and that's very counterintuitive to most of our politicians <laughs> um, you know they they look they tend to like to paint uh, property investors as as the villains of the piece mm -hmm. when actual fact um they're actually the solution if only they realized it um so um there's no solution on site to the shortage we're, we're going to continue to see very low vacancy rates and rents rising and that's um, a great equation uh for investors and the, the figures on the screen are for brisbane the greater brisbane area um and one of the other things that i think's incredibly important for Brisbane is that um, those projects on the screen, the ones in green are currently under construction and the ones mm. in red are important projects that are um, proposed. Um, in fact, the Kuma Connector project is, um, you know, the preliminary work is already underway, but there's about $30 billion worth of um, infrastructure projects there. Um, listed on the screen. These, these are just the, the most significant ones. There's, there's lots of others that, um, that are a little bit smaller, but um, you know, they, they all have significance. Cross River Rail is well under construction, the Brisbane Metro, Queens Wharf, big project in the CBD, mm. which has been under construction for a few years. Um, some big, the race course development is a redevelopment of the race course with um, you know, mixed use development, um, including residential. Um, the GABA upgrade, that's a direct consequence of winning the Olympics. They're going to upgrade, mm. spend a billion dollars turning that into the venue that's going to host the opening and closing ceremonies and the athletics. Mm -hmm. um, the station precincts, $3 billion of um, mixed use developments above the, the rail stations that are being created for the Cross River Rail. So that's all um, essentially underground rail, but above it, there's going to be you know, yeah. retail, apartments, um, offices, etc., and what's proposed is a potentially another three billion dollars in investment. Mm -hmm. And this is all really important, um, not just numbers on the screen. These essentially translates into tens of thousands of jobs. And um, 
the workers that they need for these projects don't exist, all of them in Brisbane, they've got to come from outside. So that's going to be boosting population. People are going to be coming from all over Australia to work on these projects. They need somewhere to live. The property market's going to get tremendous boost. Already is. That's one of the reasons why markets have risen like they have to date. But there's more to come because there's going to be a lot more of this. Um, and the, the 2032 Olympics makes that even more certain. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's um, really important stuff. And um, one of the reasons why I have confidence that um, you know Brisbane's surge in the last couple of years isn't a flash in the pan. There'll be ups and downs. There always are in property cycles along the way. Nowhere grows at 25% per year for 10 years. But um, I think anybody who buys a property in Brisbane now, 10 years from now, I think will be a very happy little camper. Um, mm. Mm. I've, got a, I've got a lot of happy clients up there already. We've been in there for quite a few years, Terry, so uh, they're really enjoying the ride. Yes, I'm, I'm sure you're right, and, and, and there's more to come. Um, I just want to end that show, um, because there were just a few basic um, slides to give people a bit of a snapshot of where Brisbane sits in the market and why we think um, Brisbane's worthy of consideration by investors. And now I'd like to um, have a chat about some of the specific markets um, mm. around Brisbane. And uh, the one, one, many of the markets that stand out, um, not just in Brisbane, but around Australia, the ones that are, as we said at the beginning of the broadcast, um, the ones that offer an a degree of affordability. And um, Brisbane's mm. got uh, some notable precincts um, that, that fit that category. Um, the Moreton Bay region in the north, um, Ipswich City in the southwest, also Logan City in the south. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind that whereas Sydney and Melbourne are carved up into dozens and dozens of local government areas, municipalities, Brisbane's only got six covering the whole Greater Brisbane area. Brisbane mm -hmm. City Council covers a big chunk, and then north of in the northern um, outer ring areas, you've got Moreton Bay region, which is mm -hmm. one of the the nation's most compelling growth. Um, economies and markets uh, and then Ipswich is in the southwestern um, part of the greater Brisbane area and um, well, the things that stand out about those places for me not only affordability either, but the degree of um, jobs that exist in those areas and there's one of the fallacies um, that still persists that most people work in the CBDs and the reality is that most people don't most people work in suburban jobs nodes and uh, so people, the average person wants to buy real estate where they can buy affordably, close to where they work. And so th these are areas that have got a lot of jobs, a lot of good basic infrastructure in place and more coming up. So we maybe we could start by talking about um, Moreton Bay region. Um, this is, um, I think, Tony, you're going to be sending a copy of these reports to to people on your list. Um, yeah, for everyone that's on tonight um, that's watching, we're going to send out a copy of both those reports to you so you don't need to take notes. But uh, pay attention because there's some pretty key things here Terry will bring up shortly about where we're going to look for opportunities and also where I've got these exclusive packages that will come up in amongst all this. So um, I'll put that thing back in the chat if anybody wants to jump on and just quickly click and put yourself... Um, a spot to have a talk to me and Terry, keep it on rolling. Thank you. Okay, so Moreton Bay region, um, the, I guess the outer ring suburbs of the north of Brisbane includes um, that image in the front cover of this report is um, Recliffe, the Recliffe Peninsula, which is um, a wonderful, very underrated, but becoming increasingly trendy, um, as the name suggests, um, cluster of suburbs almost totally surrounded by water. Um, got a lot to offer, um, but it has become, in the last couple of years, quite expensive. Other parts of the Moreton Bay region are more affordable, and we'll get to the sort of pricing that's typical in the area in a moment, but um, we always, in our reports, we think the local economy is really important, and um, what you can see there, amongst other things on that page, is the down here, the population and demographics, um, the current population of the Moreton Bay local government area is 425,000. So in its own right, it's a very big city, uh, but it's projected to be 
over 650,000 uh, within 20 years. Um, it's got uh, land for future growth um, and it's um, one of the strongest uh, growth, uh, population growth areas mm. anywhere in Australia, not just in Brisbane. Um, it's got lots of great amenities um, up, up there. It's got uh, major retail, bulky goods retail. The, um, there's very few IKEA superstores in Australia. There's only two in the Brisbane um, metropolitan area and um, one of them is in this precinct. Um, as well as you know, Costco, North Lake, Bunnings. Um, so it offers a lot with retail. Um, there are great uh, motorway links. You can uh, very quickly get on the Gateway motorway and head uh, north to the Sunshine Coast, south to the Gold Coast, or you can use that motorway network to get into the centre of Brisbane if you want to go there. But most people who live in this area work um, other in other places, they work locally or in, say, the Australian Trade Coast Precinct, which is not far away. Um, that's the big commercial industrial precinct that surrounds the Brisbane airports and the Port of Brisbane, which are close together, not far from uh, this Moreton Bay region. Uh, so this, just just while you're there, mate, are you able to expand that a little bit or zoom that a little bit? It's a little bit hard to see. Okay, I'll just try and make it a, a little bit bigger. Uh, So that's better. Yep. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, jobs notice there's some really big ones um, on the north side of Brisbane. That's where the domestic and international airports are. That's where the Port of Brisbane is. And um, the Australian Trade Coast precinct, which surrounds all of that, because a lot of businesses want to be close to the seaport and the airport. There's about 60,000 jobs there. And so a lot of people who live in um, this area um, where, where housing is, is affordable. Um, work in that precinct, which is um, um, very easily accessible from here by the, the Gateway Motorway. Um, so if we, we look at the sort of pricing, um, firstly, perhaps we'll, even more importantly, is, is the vacancy rates. There's um, 12 or 13 postcodes in the Moreton Bay region, local government area, and you can see there's not a single one that's got a vacancy rate as high as 1%. Um, it's extraordinary to see numbers like that, you know, as low as 0.2% in mm. a couple of those postcodes. And so it's right across this region, um, very competitive rental market. Um, and um, there is a, a unit market that's relatively small. The, the big numbers occur in this market, the house market. Um, so we've got um, not every suburb in the Moreton Bay region on this, this page, but, you know, a representative example, <clears throat> and you can see that um, there's some very high turnover of houses in suburbs like Morayfield, over 500, Narangbar, mm. almost the same, North Lakes, which is a, yep. a master plan community that's been a work in progress for the past 15 or 20 years, that's over mm. 500. Um, places I like um, include Launton and Petra because, um, well, well, we'll talk about it in a moment, but that's where the new university campus. Big, big university up there at Petrie, yep. Yeah, and that's going to be a huge generator. Um, it's, mm. you know, it's, it's only at stage one. It, it ultimately, it's going to be a much bigger facility. Um, you can see there's been good growth here already, but um, still a, a high level of affordability. There's still plenty of suburbs with median prices in the four and five hundred thousands, which for... Mm. You know, people in um, Sydney and Melbourne is attractive pricing um, and the rental yields, um, you know, many, many of these suburbs are still four, four and a half percent, notwithstanding the, the price growth we've seen in the last couple of years. And, yeah, um, I mean, you know, there's a double advantage there for investors from Melbourne because number one, you're going to go in at a much lower price point, a more affordable, affordable level for most, you know, investors, especially first time investors, but you also get a better bang for your buck from a rental yield. So, Really important because we don't see these numbers and figures in Melbourne anymore. This is this is figures that we've seen, you know, five, 10, 12 years ago down here. Yeah, I mean, probably the only, only part of the Melbourne market where you can get um, sort of houses in the, the four four hundred thousands, five hundred thousands would be sort of out, out in the Melton area, probably. Um, you won't do it out there anymore. No, certainly, <laughs> not, certainly not. For, certainly not for new stuff. Um, no, so, not at all. 
So one of the advantages of an area like this is that you know you, you've got a choice, um, you've got established mm. suburbs, but there's also a lot of um, new development. So you, if, you know if your preference is for you know brand new property, uh, low maintenance, um, better quality, maybe get a better standard of tenant, then um, that's certainly an option because there's there's plenty of um, new house and land package type products available throughout this region. Yeah, um, I know those areas pretty well. I was up there probably six seven years ago now i spent a couple of weeks driving around up there seeing where it was going yeah they put all the new train stations were coming in there were six or seven train stations built up there the the uni was starting off you know there was some pretty big stuff happening so i'm pretty familiar with that area mate so i'm glad you brought that up with us tonight yeah no it's a good area I, i've been a bit of a fan of this area for a while it really has performed um recently i think it will continue to because it's still got that relative affordability but it's also got growth drivers because mm -hmm. uh, we think the most important part of all our reports is this one, the future prospects. Um, mm. The present and the past are interesting, but don't necessarily inform the future. What we're looking for is our drivers of future growth. And this one on the screen here, this here, the new university at Petrie, this is the University of Sunshine Coast new campus, which mm. opened early 2020, um, just in time for COVID. Um, but <laughs> it's, it's only stage one um, within... Um, by um, 2030, um, before we get to the Olympics, there'll be, they expect to have 10,000 students there and ultimately it'll be 20,000 students. So it's gonna be a big campus. There's plenty of land there for it to evolve. Um, and there's lots of stuff already starting to spring up around it because a university is such a generator of demand. Um, you know, the students, the, the, the staff that work in a complex like this, they generate demand for you know, cafes, um, mm -hmm. They generate demand for rentals in the area, and they also generate demand for people to buy property. And so, mm -hmm. the, the rental demand, as this university continues to evolve, is just going to become stronger and stronger. And um, it's on the train line, so um, people can mm -hmm. sort of live um, maybe two or three stops up the train line. Um, and so, suburbs don't have to be right on the doorstep of the university to, to get um, benefit from the the rental demand that we. Mm. continually generated by this project yeah so it, it's a very influential thing but there's actually um quite a lot more happening and at the back of all of our reports we um we we list the projects that we think are influential um in this area there's a, a new hospital or sorry a, a redevelopment of the existing hospital 400 million dollars under construction at the moment there are um highway upgrades and the nearby Bruce Hyrie, that's the M1, um, that extends from Brisbane pretty much all the way to the, the top of Queensland, which um, if you drove it, it would take you days. It's a big, mm. it's a big highway, but this is the, the section in the, um, the north of Brisbane. So there's big money being spent there. Um, the Gateway Motor Upgrade, that's um, yet another upgrade of the Gateway Motorway. That's the one that kind of links, um, if you jump on the Gateway Motorway, you can head north, you can head south of the Gold Coast. Yeah. Um, and it's been a real game changer um, since that was first. And it's continually being expanded and upgraded. So another billion dollars to be spent there. Mm. These things aren't, are important, not just because they um, improve the amenity and accessibility of an area, but because they generate enormous economic activity and employment. And that, that's why you know, Brisbane is going to continue to have demand so when you've got projects like that in your neighbourhood, um, you know you're going to have um, plenty of real estate demand because because of the employment that's been created. Here, this one here, North Harbour Marina, that's um, a, a priority development area that's been declared, and that's ultimately a project of more than two and a half billion dollars. And so it goes on. Um, mm. You're going to send the copy of this to everybody. Twenty seven yeah, people. Sure. Look at, at it at their yeah. leisure, but um, this stuff I think is really important in terms yeah. of okay, you can see where the future growth is going to come from in an era when you've got so many projects, many of which are hundred million dollars, three hundred million dollars, five hundred, one billion dollars. Um, mm. There's a lot coming up in the future of this area. Yeah, it, it's really important, folks. The information that Terry's getting us getting across here tonight is really, really critical because once you understand, you know, the projection, it's a great point you make, Terry, about the forward projection, not so much what's happened in the past, but hey, where are we heading and what's coming up? 
when you see these sort of statistics and sort of numbers, like when you said to me 20,000 people at Petrie University, well, I nearly fell off my chair. I thought it was about 5,000, but it's obviously 20. I mean, those numbers, they're, they're massive. So as an investor, take a bit of time to sit down and go through these reports when you receive them via email and um, get a really good understanding of these areas. This is what you need to know to make a confident, informed investment decision. And um, just a final reference before we move on to another part of the Brisbane market, uh, the, the Olympics. Um, this, this year is going to be hosting events. It's not all going to be happening at the Gabba. That's just the mm. athletics. There's you know, so many other events. Um, and um, this area includes the Redcliffe Furniture, the people who follow rugby league, the NRL. Um, there's going to be a new team, the Dolphins, which is based in this area and uh, mm. new uh, stadium facilities being developed for that. Um, some of which are going to play a part in the Olympics, um, you know, as training facilities or hosting various sporting events. So um, there's going to be some direct impact um, from the Olympics for this area as well. well that's good to know. Yeah. Okay, so that's the, the Morton Bay region up in the north. We'll just um, swap places um, with just a minute. I'll just try and make it a little bit bigger. If we're sitting in the southwest now, um, I sort of rate this area very highly for a number of reasons. One is it's the the most affordable part of the Brisbane market. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, it's it it's already had some good growth price wise, but it hasn't yet fulfilled its potential price wise. Some yeah. parts of the Brisbane market have had um, you know a couple of years of really big growth. This one I feel is a little bit further back in the cycle, so there's more upside. Yeah, um, I, can vouch, I can vouch for that. I've got quite a few investors down through this corridor in various areas. So, yeah, it's interesting to get your feedback on this one, Terry. Yeah, um, so affordability, um, lots of population growth. Um, we'll sort of look at this page here and um, you can see at the, um, the census last year, 229,000 people in Ipswich City. But... In 10 years' time, that's going to be well over 400,000. And that's um, a phen phenomenal rate of growth. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, it grew 3%. That's well above national and state averages. It's one of the highest growth rates uh, for a, a municipality anywhere in Australia. Yeah, and, it's almost doubled. Yeah, and it's 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 going to continue because um, it's just it's got affordability that there is um, room for growth. But there's lots of jobs, no doubt. There's some really big, like there's a RAF base, one of the biggest um, military bases in Australia is on the fringe of Ipswich City. So a lot of people uh, get jobs there. There's some major hospitals with more to come. There's some very big commercial industrial areas. Um, and we'll talk about some of those in the future prospects. But, um, you know, defence, for example, is, is a big part of the local economy, not just the RAF base, but also... Uh, facilities that are manufacturing vehicles for the military, for example, that's big industry that's um, very present in its city. So it's not a case of people living out here because it's cheap and jumping on a train and going to the centre of Brisbane to work. Most of the people who live out here work locally because there's lots of jobs out here. So it sort of ticks that box as well. And it's not a, not a bad little trip from this area down to the Gold Coast either, right? Well, the motorway network has improved enormously. There's mm. various upgrades over the years. You've got the Ipswich motorway, which links to the Logan motorway, which links, links to the <laughs> M1. So um, you can you can jump in your car somewhere in Ipswich City and you can get to the Gold Coast without um, passing through a single traffic light. Um, right. Just a, a series of interlinked motorways. Um, and there's more to come. Um, I mentioned that in the... The infrastructure list, the Coomera connector, they're actually replicating the M1 that links Brisbane to the Gold Coast because it gets congested at peak hour times. Mm. And um, so they're building a, a replica um, called the first stage is called the Coomera connector, and that's getting underway now. So, um, you know, big investment um, precipitated by uh, population growth. Lots of manufacturing happens in Ipswich City. Uh, but, you know, again, Look at the vacancy rates, uh, most of them are well below 1%. One's mm -hmm. just a fraction of it. It's interesting. Um, now, we used to see across Australia, areas like Ripley, that's a new development area. It used to be yeah. common for those areas to have like 6% vacancy rates because this sort of new product takes time to be soaked up. Now what we're seeing in these areas, um, 
that even despite the fact that they're a new development area, um, vacancy is only about 1%. And then you've got areas like Red Bank Plains and, and Collingwood Park next door, 0.5%. Yeah. yeah, under 1%. Yeah, so, so these are the sorts of prices that are happening. And as you can see, even though the Morton Bay region was, was very affordable, um, this is even more so. And despite the level of growth we've seen in the last one to two years, we've still got suburbs with median prices in the 300,000s, like uh, Leichhardt and Bundamba. Um, and, um, but more commonly now in the sort of low to mid 400,000s. And, um, you know, you've got some, look, look at this Red Bank Plains. Yeah. Almost 700 sales of houses in the last 12 months. So, so just, just touch on that for one second, please, Terry, for the audience here. So that type of number of sales activity, what does that specifically mean to the lay investor there? That's how many houses have sold in the last 12 months. Mm. Um, and, you know, around, around Australia, it's com probably common to see popular suburbs selling, you know, two or 250 or maybe 300 sales in a year. When you're yep. selling 700 houses in a year, that's, that's exceptional. Mm. And um, this area has been targeted because of its affordability and its um, proximity to desirable things. Now, the thing about Red Bank Plains, it's an older established suburb. It's right next door to this thing, Springfield and Springfield Lakes Master Plan Community. Yeah. Yeah, for, for those that don't know, right, Springfield is Australia's largest um, residential um, community development. Is that correct? Yeah, and, and it's been going for 20 years, but it's still yeah. only partially developed. Mm -hmm. And um, just showing my age again, but I can remember standing... <laughs> Was it, I was created by a, an entrepreneur called Maha Sinathambi. Yeah. And he's still very much involved, although um, his daughter, I think, is, is sort of the managing director of the company. Mm. And I had to do some publicity for him. We were standing on this, what appeared to me to be just a wasteland. There was nothing there. And he said, I'm going to build a city here. And I thought, this, this guy's mad. I mean, mm. why would you build a city here? Well, um, 20 years later, there is a city there with a, a, a substantial population. There's um, a private hospital. There's a yeah. university campus. Mm. There's a six-star shopping centre. Um, there's a big commercial precinct. There are now rail links to central Brisbane from there. They're mm. setting up um, sporting facilities. So the Brisbane Lions AFL team will have their headquarters and training base there. Um, and I, the, the achievement to create this from... Um, from nothing is, is just extraordinary and it's still going on. The point is buying new product there, you're sort of paying these prices, high fives, low sixes. Right next door is the longer established suburb of Red Bank Plains where uh, real estate is cheaper, but you can still access all the facilities and infrastructure next door in, in Springfield. You don't have to buy in Springfield to, to go to the shopping centre or the, um, the university campus. So Totally makes sense, mate. Um, listen, folks, if you're listening to this broadcast right now, click that link that I've just put into the chat and book in because I'm going to tell you specifically about some opportunities in these specific areas that Terry's touching on right here. Yeah, so you can see from the, the sales numbers just, just how much demand is now coming to this market. And we've been charting this for the last, say, 12 months. The almost exponential increase quarter by quarter in the number of sales happening in this market because people have really woken up to this area. They've got affordability, mm -hmm. there's jobs out there, there's great infrastructure already, there's more to come. And so the sales numbers have just grown quarter by quarter. Um, and even though we've had big price growth, it's still incredibly affordable. So yeah. Um, yeah. there's more to come for Ipswich. And you can yeah. see from this column here, um, you can get pretty good rental yields. Um, yep. Um, for between um, 4.5 and 5% um, for some sub. And, and be, bear in mind, these are the medians. Um, mm. Medians is like the, the middle position in the market. So there's, there's plenty of people buying properties in these areas where they're getting higher rental yields than that. And we'll just go back to this, the vacancy rates, you can see mm. that um, there's great potential for, for further growth in uh, rentals here. There's a lot coming up in the future. Um, big spending on infrastructure, that, that thing we look for. And again, yeah. the back of the report, which everyone will get a copy of, you can see um, you know, upgrade of the hospital, also a new public hospital at Springfield, which is right next to those suburbs I talked about, like Red Bank Plains, um, 
projects large and small, it's, it's a very big list as we scroll through yeah. um, commercial developments. This one here, this is the Brisbane Lions AFL Stadium that's under construction at Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, that's going, just going to bring, plus their new sport and leisure hospitality hub. Um, this is really big for an area like this to get, you know, um, you know the Brisbane Lions, depending on who you support, I mean, they're, they're, uh, they're up towards the top of the ladder. They've been there for a few years. They're a serious mm -hmm. um, major national sporting organisation and, and they're, all this infrastructure has been created for them out, out at uh, Ipswich, um, which is a bit of a coup, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, um, yeah, lo lots of schools. When you've got population growth at the level that Ipswich is getting, that you need um, big investment in primary and secondary schools. You can see from some of those projects that there's a lot of money being uh, poured into that as well in this area. Uh, RAF Base Amberley just keeps on expanding. Um, you know, it's, it's just... Um, a continual growth project and then you've got lots of big uh, residential developments as well so there's um and um this one is maybe the most important of all uh transport infrastructure mm. and um if it's motorway recently had a big upgrade um there's more more to come in that area um that they recently extended rail links down to Springfield. They're going to continue that extension. It's going to go out through Red Bank Plains towards Ripley and then up to um, the Ipswich CBD, which is out in the west. So um, rail links will continue to improve out in those areas as well. Absolutely. Well, that's critical too for people to know that there's transport and transport infrastructure as well. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's a lot of investment in rail in particular in um, the greater Brisbane area, but um, particularly out in areas like this where there's, there's so much population growth happening. So, um, yep, yeah, it's um, it brings in our, um, our current edition of, um, in fact, our new edition of Top 5 Brisbane Hotspots, which we're publishing later this week, we've got Ipswich City ranked number one. Um, for all the reasons I've just talked about, mm. Um, mm. the affordability, the, the infrastructure spend, the major employment zones, and the low vacancies and good rental yields. So it's, mm. it offers a lot um, in the city that you know, has been and still is leading price growth um, amongst the capital cities of Australia. That's good news. Um, and also, too, down on that south South, southwest corridor down there. Um, you've also got the Logan city of Logan as well, which there's a lot of major infrastructure happening. In what's sort of pretty much the um, the suburbs next door, isn't it? Yeah, um, Logan is like the neighbour of Ipswich it, City. It's mm. in the south, Ipswich in the southwest, so they um, they sort of merge. The Logan motorway sort of links the two. Logan mm. sort of is the urban bridge between central Brisbane and the Gold Coast. And it's also got a high level of affordability, um, good infrastructure, plenty of new things coming up. So just another one of those areas that, you know, Brisbane sort of has got um, a budget to suit pretty much everybody. Um, there's, there's areas where you can buy houses in the 300,000 still, more commonly the 400,000 right up into the, the prestige, yeah. the multi-million dollar areas. So yeah. it offers a lot, but... The most important thing is is the future, the future growth pros, growth prospects, which I think are as good as anywhere in the country. Yeah, can we just touch on to maybe um, I've got a couple of specific project builders who I deal direct with. So if anybody's listening and they're a bit worried about builders or, or building companies going broke, etc., I've got a couple of really good reputable builders I've been using for years, so we can package things up in this area. Also, with the rental side of things, people in Melbourne go, oh, gee, if my property's in Brisbane, how do I, who looks after the rental? Well, I've also got uh, property management set up in Brisbane as well. So for anyone that's interested in these areas and you think that this could be a good place for you to look at investing, you might be a first-time investor, you might be looking for a second opportunity to diversify a bit, maybe get one out of Melbourne and have one up in, up in Brizzy, um, which I highly recommend that you do. Um, that's just, we can set the whole thing up for you so we can take away that bit of worry, that bit of fear. Um, look, if we can jump on a plane and travel, we can always go for a spin up and have a look at the areas and uh, cruise around. 
Um, I know those areas pretty well, Terry. I've been up and down there quite a few times over the last five to 10 years. And as I said earlier, I've got a lot of people down in that Southwest corridor already who have um, already started to see some good at exponential growth. So I, I think the info you've, you've presented tonight, the, the data, the infrastructure and what's coming up, it just paints a really good picture for people to see the future prospects of um, you know, investing. And I think for most of my clients, we invest for two reasons. One, capital growth and long-term wealth. And two, if we can get a good rental yield while we can, well, that's like um, putting a bit of uh, cream on the sponge cake. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, look, I, mate, I think that's really great tonight what you presented in for us. There's lots of opportunities there for people, but we get really specific when we delve into this. Um, Terry listed a lot of areas and a lot of locations, but you may or may not be familiar with any or some of them, but we know some of those areas really, really well up there. So we're, we're quite bullish on that area and um, we're looking forward to some good opportunities there for our um, for our clients going forward. Absolutely. And um, so I just wonder whether anybody um, watching might have any questions, you can yeah. um, type them into the chat box or the, the Q&A panel. You should see either or both in front of you there. Um, so choose one of these two. I'll just stop my share and... Um, Don't be shy. Got a question? Far away. You've got Terry here and should. we can have a talk. Now's an opportunity. Um, what's, the, what's the building game been like up there, Terry? Just while we're waiting to see if anyone has, a, has any questions. Um, we've had quite a few builders tip over down, down in Victoria here, but... That's actually a normal occurrence because ASIC numbers show me that around 450 to 500 builders a year go broke in Victoria, regardless of what's going on here with COVID and the lack of materials. And um, again, it could be a lot of media beat up. How's it, how's it looking up, up your way around Brizzy? Is there much activity in the media around builders and builders collapsing? Um, there has been some, um, but it's mostly been, um, you know, looking at, um, you know, the supply cycles, the, the shortages of, um, <coughs> you know, to a certain degree, you know, when, when the politicians interfere with um, property markets, they, they generally um, cr create problems more, more than solutions. And um, you know, the, the grant to encourage people to build uh, new houses um, was more successful than anyone imagined, but they hadn't really considered the consequences if they were successful, like, are there enough bricks and are there enough brick layers? And that, that's basically the problem, as it turns out, the weren't. And so um, there's, there's caused delays and there have been rising costs. Um, some builders um, haven't um, haven't survived all of the consequences of that. But um, nevertheless, I mean, you only hear about the bad cases, don't you? The, the mm -hmm. good ones, which are probably 95% of them, um, you know, the industry is very busy because this is um, population growth central, southeast Queensland is where most of the, um, the interstate migration or the biggest chunk of interstate migration is going. And um, the industry is just really busy trying to keep up with all that. Yep, I can totally understand that. Uh, we do have a question here. It's come up in the Q&A, Terry. I'll, I'll relay it for you. Are the investments Brisbane in Brisbane proportionally much higher compared to Melbourne? Um, Suresha, I, I assume you're, you're talking about pricing. Um, mm. And we, we did look um, a little bit earlier at sort of the comparative numbers where um, median house price in Melbourne is like close to a million and Brisbane's sort of a, in the mid 800 thousands. Um, so, you know, Brisbane is is more affordable than either Sydney or Melbourne. Um, if, if you're referring to pricing, um, you know, there's um, I think there's 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 room for further growth. That um, you know, Brisbane will probably always be uh, less expensive um, than Sydney or Melbourne, but it's certainly it, the gap will close. So, Suresh, you're talking about investments in um, infrastructure. Um, Melbourne has a big infrastructure spend as well, particularly on sort of rail projects. Um, Sydney has had, but probably um, a lot of the big projects 
um, have um, been completed, or with the exception of the new airport, of course, that's going to be a big one. Um, relative to its size, I think Brisbane's got one of the biggest infrastructure spends of any capital city in Australia. So we've always got to be, um, as I think, you know, proportionately use that word, um, relative to its size, Brisbane's probably as big as anywhere uh, in the country. Um, but it's going to get bigger. I think that's the, the key thing because it's got to um, invest a lot to get ready for big events. And it's not just the Olympics. Um, I think we touched on that in another um, broadcast, Tony, the, the number of big sporting events that are coming to Australia. Oh, yeah, we did. We did. Yes. Um, we've got the Women's Football World Cup, FIFA World Cup for Women. Um, otherwise known as soccer, although I'm not allowed to use that word, apparently. Um, we've got two rugby what, world cups. Is that, what, is that word political in, incorrect or something? Is it? well, it's, well, it's, got to, it's got to be football. Um, but, um, you know, for a lot of people, football is, is AFL. So well, that's just right. to distinguish, um, the, the, the FIFA World Cup for women's coming to Australia. That We've got yeah. two rugby world cups. Rugby world cups. We've, got, we've got the Commonwealth Games in regional Victoria, and we've got, of course, the Brisbane Olympics. So um, mm. many of those events... Um, apart from the the um, regional Victorian Commonwealth Games, uh, those um, World Cups are spread around the country. So Brisbane will be getting a big chunk of that action as well uh, because it's mm. got some very impressive stadiums such as um, Suncor Stadium where the State of Origin game happened, the, the decider recently. Yeah, how, how good was that? that I'm not well, a, I don't know the rules, but I'll tell you what, that's one of the best sporting games and sporting events I've ever seen that night. That was just brilliant. Yeah, that was a, an epic event. Um, regardless of who you're backing, it was a fantastic game. Mm. And um, but a fantastic stadium. I've been to, I mean, stadiums like that can host anything. I've been to international soccer there. I've been to rugby union tests. I've been to state of origin rugby league games. Um, so a stadium like that is just a fantastic thing to be at. And then, of course, you've got the gavel where they have the AFL and the cricket. Um, so, um, sorry, diverting a bit there. But, yeah, I think, um, Suresh, that Brisbane's infrastructure has been proportionately is um, on a par with, um, with certainly with Melbourne at the moment, um, maybe higher um, relative to its size. Any other questions from anybody? Um, uh... I think she's a little bit quiet tonight. Um, look, folks, if uh, if you haven't got anything further to ask Terry or myself, um, jump into the chat line if you want to jump on board and know about these opportunities that we've got up in Brisbane. Um, just click on that link. It'll go direct to a calendar. It'll book a time that suits you, and I'll be on the other end of the call, and we'll have a chat to you about uh, Brisbane and opportunities. So for now, Terry, I think... Again, thanks so much. You've done a great job with the data and the research. It really helps open people's eyes up, makes them understand what's actually really happening out there in the market as opposed to, and look, I sound like a broken record, but I tell my clients, look, stay out of the media. Don't pay any attention to where they're at because most of what they're saying is just absolute baloney. But uh, mate, again, thanks so much for tonight, Terry. Thanks to all the listeners and viewers who uh, jumped on board tonight. Hope you enjoyed it got some value out of it, um, give you some education around it and look forward to talking to you all again pretty soon. Thanks, Terry. Okay. Um, Suresh, thanks for making it happen. Thank you, Suresh, for your thanks. Thanks, Suresh. Thanks, Tony. Um, yeah, enjoy it. Always enjoy talking about real estate markets. So, um, yeah. Um, all right. I hope, you, I hope people found us the information useful. Yeah, and we'll have the report sent out to you once once they've landed on my desk. We'll send them all out to you via email. Okay, so thanks again, Terry, and thanks everybody, and enjoy your day. Okay.